Hello guys, today I'll be talking about render probes and then I will talk you through how to implement it. I'll be starting with a theoretical part and then we'll deep dive into practical examples. Please keep in mind that with the latest versions of React, we can implement code usability easily with React hooks. However, the goal of this tutorial is for people that want to learn more about render probes and for people who are working with legacy code repositories and third-party plugins. All right. So what is render prop? Render prop is a pattern that emerged from using regular features that are available in JavaScript and React, like passing down function as a props. It is a technique for sharing code between components using a prop whose value is a function. Actually, it is not something that is being built into React, and the prop we call render could be called anything like title, name, or anything else. React at the beginning did not anticipate that people would be using it. There are many scenarios where it is useful to use the render prop for code usability. So let us see next how to implement it. Well, let us start first with a simple example and learn render props step by step. First here we have a simple React application that has a component called example. Here in the example component, it, it's very simple. It renders an H1 element and it is important imported here in app.js all right so let us first uh, pass a prop to the example component called name so here i'm gonna pass a prop called name equal to the artif all right save nothing happened here because we have to do some change in the example component i'm gonna here pass the props and then here let me just uh, do some modification but hello my name is props.name all right so and let us save as we can see here we were able to pass a prop value to the component example from apps to example here and it renders the first name all right very simple Open. Now let us think what are the data types that can we pass as a prop to the example component. Here we are passing a string and by now we know that things like uh, numbers and boolean will work just fine. What about passing an array? It will work fine as well. Let us check. So here in the app component I'm gonna pass an array. Let me just delete this. All right. Okay, and save this one. As we can see, it is working as well. All right. Now, what about passing a function? Let us pass a function as a prop to the example component. Okay. So here, instead of passing an array, I'm gonna pass a function. I'm gonna keep the name here of the prop as name, and I'm gonna pass a function. Just a second. In a second, I will change it. So here, I'm going to have a function All right, that return hello, my name is Atif. Okay. Save this here. And then in the example component, we have to update the code in order to call the function as follows. All right. So here, I'm gonna add here the following and by saving I can see the output is changed so no need for this one now if I save we can see we were able to pass a function to a component all right so not only a variable we can pass also a function okay the function in the app component return the string as regular text. It works because functions are valid argument that work in the same way as we pass them down as props and react. Okay, now let us factor our code in the example component. We will make it return whatever is coming from the function passed down in the props. And in the app component, let us refactor the function to retain a JSX. All right. So here in the app component, I'm gonna do the following. I will make it retain a JSX, okay? 
and here I will have hello my name is Atif okay and in the example component I'll have the following instead of h1 let me just delete this and remove this as well okay and save save all right so it's working fine so here i have a function that retain a jsx passed down to the example component all right cool now one thing i wanted to mention in that is that what is the difference between a function and a functional component the obvious difference is that functional component as we can see here in app.js return a jsx all right okay now let us update the function to accept an input as a parameter called name so here i'm gonna add an input parameter name okay and here i'm gonna display it name All right. Also, the props name, let's change it now to render. So instead of having here name, I'm going to change it to render. Okay, since it is just a prop, we can call it anything we want. I'm going to call it as render. All right. And in the example component here, we don't have this name anymore. We have render in the props and I'm going to pass here my name save and follow it's working as well so here in app.js we change the function to accept a variable display it and we call the value render okay i hope you can see where i'm going with this we simply change the props name to render which means that we are asking the example component to render whatever is returning from the function the app component will render the example component and it doesn't have control over the value name which is passed as an input parameter to the render function but it can use it however it wants this means that the app component can choose what to render with the value that is coming whether it could be an h1 or a render list or anything else and the example component has no idea how the app component is going to render the data but it is passing the data to the app component. It will call the render function and pass the data to it. And in this example, we are passing the string Atif. Okay. This is where the idea of render props came out and it can be used in different scenarios in order to implement code reusability. For example, the render function could uh, receive a Boolean value and based on its value, it will render different GSX and we can use the same component somewhere else to implement code reusability. Let us now see an example of code reusability using render props. In the following example, we have a component called flip state that is used to flip the state value from two, from true to false, and so on. All right, this component will be implemented once and used by other two components. Example one, it's imported here, and example two, it's imported here as well. The app component will simply render the two components as follows. It will render example one and example two. So here, this application is very easy. We have a state value of uh, off. We flip it to on and flip back to off. And good morning, just as an example, we change it to good evening and so on. So the code usability here was implemented in flip state here. Okay, this flip state, it has a state variable on and the function flip to flip the state of the variable on okay let me now explain one of these example one in example one we hunt we have the render prop uh, here it is a function that it receive a state variable on and a function flip and return here and h1 element and a span we are checking if on is true or false and based on it we are displaying either on or off and when you click the button flip it calls the flip function that's coming from here and then change the state and in the flip state here it's also very simple it has one state variable on and a function to flip it all right and that's it for this tutorial
Finally, I hope that the idea of render pop is more clear now, and I will say it again that with the latest version of React, we can implement code usability easily with React Hop. However, the goal of this tutorial is for people that want to learn render probes and for people who are working with legacy code. If you guys need an endless example of the use of render prop, please reach out to me in the comment below and I will be more than happy to create another tutorial. Until then, stay safe and thank you.